All right, friends, it's T, and I'm back with our favorite <laughs> gym lifting slave, Jason Blaha, Strength and Fitness. Yes, Ma, we're going to review this video this morning. He just popped up. I can't wait. <laughs> so Blaha says, training intensity versus progressive overload for gains. Hmm, training intensity versus progressive overload for gains. Okay, interesting, okay. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about uh, progressive overload versus our training intensity. Um, so this is something I frequently get from clients, I frequently get from uh, followers who will talk to me about this. And clients? Followers? I don't know, man. I still doubt he has any clients, but okay, whatever. <laughs> They'll ask me, you know, it's like, uh, if uh, I'm progressing... They will ask Blaha, <laughs> like he's the foremost uh, inf inf information, uh, how should I put it, uh, the foremost uh, expert on the subject, yes, coach, our coach, Blaha, coach. Okay, whatever. Then I'm stimulating growth, right? And it really isn't quite as straightforward as that. And let me clarify that a little bit. I mean, you, you're in the right direction, but here's the thing. If you are pushing your work sets hard, you are getting them very, very close to failure or you are hitting failure, right? So like watch this, this squat set here. This squat set, I, I had about zero reps in reserve. My last rep, uh, Okay, notice when he goes down, he, he goes down pretty deep on this, right? I don't know how much he's got here. He's got about three, five, 315, right, or something. I don't know. It's pot, yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe these weights are fake, real, I don't know. If they're real, whatever, 315, I don't know. So he goes down, he goes down quite a bit, but it's not, it's not really, uh, his legs are quite wide apart. They're not flush. And he's not really going down all the way. Like his butt isn't touching the back of his ankles. Okay, that's that's where the major stretch happens. The the micro tears happen at the bottom. But whatever, it's not it's not important. So okay, I I I haven't really counted how many. I think he's doing about ten here, just about ten reps or something. Man, I've been known to not go just. I I've been known sometimes not to go so far down. In the beginning, I might on the first 10 or 12 repetitions, I may go all the way down at the bottom, let's say on 315, okay? I may actually really go all the way down to the bottom, but at some point, it's going to get difficult. You're going to lose some of this force capacity. So what I do is I start moving for partial reps. So I can go up to 30. Sometimes I could go past 30 up to 40 repetitions. That's when you're able to eke out a new adaptation. The problem is, is that the majority of the damage happens on um, the, the bottom. That's where it happens. When you hit the bottom in the eccentric exercise in this squat, that's where the micro damage happens. That's where the adaptations happen. That's the problem with squat. A lot of people tend to squat. They never really go all the way down to get the stretch. They do what he's doing. Watch how he does it. The slow form was starting to degrade. That was, uh, again, zero reps. Did you notice his butt and his legs? His butt didn't touch the back of his ankles. He just kind of went down partial way. He bent, Look at his back. It's bent inward. This is how people fool you in the squat. They try to make it seem as if they did a full squat. It's The problem with, with the squat is it's... The mo it's one of the most taxing exercises like deadlift. It's a very taxing exercise. So it's almost like he's trying to get over with the exercise. Like, let me, g I can't, I finally, I got over with the exercise. Like, let me get through with this. You know, like I'm done with it type of thing. You know what I mean? So people never really put in the effort to actually, truly, truly, you should be going down. You should be, your legs should be parallel, number one. They shouldn't be so far apart like he, he has his legs here, okay? So they should be closer in together, and you should, your butt should be hitting the back of your ankles and moving up and down. Now, if you can't handle the weight, then don't do it. Do a weight that you can handle so you can eke out more adaptations, but people always want to go super heavy, so they never really, they're never really getting these adaptations, 
they miss out on the adaptation because they're stressing their body, but they're not getting the micro injuries in the legs. That's what I noticed. That was my problem too, because I seemingly just wanted to get over with, get it over with the exercise, because it's taxing. Squats are taxing. I know that. It's like deadlift, man. People always throw the weight down instead of putting the weight down. They throw the weight down, so they miss the eccentric part of the exercise. That's why they're small, strong guys. You get it? Sir, because had I gone for one more, uh, it form would have broke down really bad, and it would have been ugly. And that's no, 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 no. I don't know about form. All right, we do not want that. He says form breakdown. Let's watch this again one more time. Watch this squatting. Watch how people cheat cheat on the squat. You know, it's like uh, if uh, I'm progressing. Then See that? He just bounces. What happens is, it, like I said, they, they fool you. The people fool you on the squat. What they do is they bend their body inward, right, to control it so that they can spring back up again. It's like a springing motion when, in fact, it's supposed to be a damaging, a damaging motion, motion on the legs. He, does, he doesn't go ass to grass. It's a partial rep. It's just, it looks like to you, you're probably thinking he's doing full reps. No, it's not. This is a partial rep because he's bending his body inward. Watch. I'm stimulating growth, right? And it really isn't quite as straightforward as that. See that? That's a partial rep. That is not a full, a full, a full squat. A full squat is when the back of your ass touches the back of your heels. Yeah, man. See what I mean? And let me clear. That's why a lot of people, that's what I realized why a lot of people's legs, when they get older, this is the problem with older people. They just, they do the half squat so they don't get the adaptation process. They miss out because the adaptation happens in what? Muscle damage. If muscles aren't damaging, they're, they're not, there's no adaptations. So you have to go, you have to do full squats. I've been doing full squats again. I been I haven't been going so heavy because I found serious thing. If I do what Blaha does, these partial squats, I could go super heavy. A lot of people can. But when you when you start to discover going all the way ass to grass, actually really doing a full squat, you're gonna find that you're not gonna be doing that. You're gonna be doing like two plates on each side because it's hard. Believe me. And so now it's time to eke out new adaptations to try to get your legs bigger and stronger. You understand me? So you, it's, it, it's not about showing off in a gym to everybody that I got to lift the heaviest weight. If you do that, you won't get any adaptations if you just are focusing on doing the heaviest weight. If you're springing weights off your chest, bouncing them, and, and, and doing this like this partial squat and everything, these partial movements, you are going to miss out on the damage part. You understand me? Yeah, certain exercises, they require certain specific things to eke out these new adaptations, specifically when it comes to de these full these full body uh, exercises, like squat, because these, these aren't, ex this is an accessory, okay? It's a lot easier on accessory, all right? Um, but like I said, full squat, deadlift, you have to lower the weight, you have to lower it. And when it comes to the squat, you got to go ask the grass, man. You're going to miss out on these adaptations. Even when it comes to the OHP, a lot of people tend to bounce, bounce the weight. They're bouncing it up and down. Yeah. Well, maybe when they're bringing it down, for sure, they're getting something there. But it still has to come down with ease and not just like bounce to your chest either. Or even the, even, um, what is it, uh... The bench press, man. A lot of people bounce it off their chest. Or they do partial reps. They just they just go like partial, 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 partial. They don't go all the way down. Verify that a little bit. I mean, you, you're in the right direction, but here's the thing. If you are pushing your work sets hard, you are getting them very, very close to failure or you are hitting failure. Right? So, like, watch this. Those are partial reps. This squat set here. This squat set, I, I had about zero reps in reserve. My last rep, a little slow form was starting to degrade. That was, uh, again, zero reps in reserve. Cause yeah, form starts to degrade because, yeah, it's, it's fatiguing. The muscle's fatiguing at some point.
they called for one more, uh, it form would have broke down really bad and it would have been ugly. And that's not what we want on a big movement. Here's the thing. He didn't have to stop at 10 because he's doing partial reps. He could have gone to 30. So he could have caused a lot more stress to that cell. There is such a thing called uh, cell splitting. You could split some cells by over, how should I put it, over um, stressing it by doing extremely high repetitions, repetition ranges, yeah. All right, we do not want that on a big barbell exercise. Okay, so uh, when we look at it from that perspective, we go, okay, that was a hard set. Okay, if we train like that, we are going to stimulate muscle growth. That was a hard set. If we train like that, we're going to stimulate muscle growth. No, that was not a hard set. A hard set is when you go extremely high in repetition with a heavy weight. Perspective of where your training volumes themselves are, um, a set of squats like that, you know, set of deadlifts like I'm doing here, hard sets like this. Look, I'll explain something to you, man. There are different variations in damage. You can cause minute damage where, where, wherein the body is not going to do anything. It won't even give you any, it won't give you any growth. If the damage is too minimal, it won't give you any growth. All right. Now, then there's damage where there's a repair and a remodeling. Okay. It repairs and remodels bigger and stronger. But then there's a, there's a third type of damage where the damage is, is so immense that there's a repair and a remodeling and then it creates a new fiber based on the first one. That's called hyperplasia. It t it'll, it'll increase the amount of fiber count that you have. It'll increase the fiber count. It'll build a new fiber based on the DNA of the first one. Okay, So you get a repair and a remodeling and you get a new muscle fiber. It's a known fact, bro. It depends. How do you do that? On a full body exercise. Why full body? Because... It's it's an overworking of the muscle. There's full damage on every on every on every muscle group has has immense damage because you started with your chest, back, shoulders, arms, forearms, chest, whatever, neck, back, this, that, whatever, abs. You're, it's an overworking of that muscle because it's not stopping. It's an incredible amount of damage that you take on. That DOMS is gonna last definitely four days. That's gonna be some serious DOMS on an upper body. Uh, workout and so you need to take the time out to to eat to repair and remodel those muscle fibers get it that's why you're able to build muscle a lot faster more and bigger and get more of it through full body exercises than doing these bro splits you could do splits and sometimes you may be able to eke out some adaptations but you're not going to get you're not going to get that amount that enough amount or that many um, that many muscle fibers out of it to grow these muscle fibers to get a lot of them it's hard it's hard it's really hard to push that weight up uh, taking close to that bleeding edge they are always going to stimulate growth of course you'll see me doing some of my my basic exercises do this video no nothing he's doing is stimulating growth because he's really adapted and these exercises are lazy and lazy people don't get anything you understand me here's the thing if you're a lazy lifter in a gym, you're going to get a zero. That's why everybody else is passing you and you're complaining about fake natties because you're cheating yourself. Look, uh, there's so many people in the gym that go, look, I'm, I'm gaining all this muscle and then they eat all these carbs and then they blow up from the carbs and then later they don't do carbs or they go away on vacation, whatever, they come back. And then they lose these gains, trying to gain these gains. And then there's people taking creatine. They just do lazy workouts. They gain some water. Then they stop the creatine. It goes away. Then they do it again or whatever. It's just all a waste of time. People love faking it and they love being lazy. You can't get anything being lazy. And you're never going to get anything if you keep faking it with carbohydrates, blowing up your muscles with carbohydrates, with fucking creatine, water, drinking gallons of milk, trying to force water into the muscle. This is all craziness. This is crazy. Muscles are built through muscle damage. And there's three waves of it. One, it'll give you shit. 
The other one give you repair and modeling, the other give you repair and modeling and a muscle fiber. So there are many ways to get these adaptations. And the amount how you get is dependent on what you're doing there in the moment. You know, squat bench deadlift, weighted pull-ups, uh, tricep extensions. Uh, I actually I actually treat my arm work the same way these days because my arms need to, need to grow. They're my Yes, they need to grow. My arms need to grow. I keep training my I keep treating my arms, they need to grow, but meanwhile they're not growing because he's adapted. Because like I tend to treat extensions and grow. People don't have to make videos all the time complaining about their arms not growing, this not growing, that not growing. You understand me? If if they truly if they truly are growing, the body will do the talking. You understand? But in Blaha's case, he's speaking all the time because he has to complain about it. It's just like these big movements, right? I push them to the limit. Uh, because he's he's compensating, he's coping for his uh, his shitty coaching. He's coping. So he how does he cope? Well, you know, the lack of my arms and this and that. I have to follow this program, got to do this, got to do that. This is pure cope. I want to see progressive overload. I want to see really high quality sets and I push them hard. Okay. Uh, so when we're training... He wants to see progressive overload. He wants to see he's going to push his sets. Okay. In that manner, we know that we are stimulating muscle growth. So people say, well, what about the progressive overload? So, so why do, for novices, we always program those progressions and try to add weight every week to form breaks or we miss reps. Um, and it's... Be yeah, you add reps and sets until form breaks. <laughs> that doesn't mean you're going to get injured because your form broke below. You're just going to not look so pretty. <laughs> That's all. Whatever it is you're doing there, I don't know. Blah is a little bit crazy. Because... With novices, those sets don't need to always be limit sets. They just need to be close. And that general increase will ensure that they're training hard. Okay? That's it. It is just making sure that they're training hard. Because even if they start fairly easy, if they keep adding weight, it's going to get hard. And then when it gets really hard and they can't do it, you let them back off. That's it. We're just making sure that they're doing hard sets. Because if you don't, you know, a novice lifter, and I've seen this for years and years in the gym, I, it's something I noticed 25 years ago. There are people He's noticed? Who will go to the gym, who are like, yeah, I've been working out 10 years, you know. And they use the same weight for their squats and their bench and everything. And, and you watch them and it's like, the, I, I saw a guy who did that early on. The only thing he trained really hard was his arms. And, and all things considered for a guy who was about, you know, 160, 170 pounds, he had great biceps. Man, a guy pushed preacher curls crazy hard all the time, all his arm work. But, you know, I used to watch him, and he would just put one plate per side on the bar. He would squat and bench. All his work sets with exactly one plate per sets of ten. You just go through the motions, you know. And obviously, then, accordingly, he didn't have particularly uh, impressive legs or particularly impressive chest. But, man, he had arms. Because then you'd watch him do all his arm work, and the guy would he, he would go all out, and he would always try to pursue strength. The guy actually could move some pretty good. All out, and he would always try to pursue strength. The guy actually could move some pretty good weight on a on a preacher curl, even. Um, but I used to see that, but he never made progress, obviously, because he didn't push. He never, and I asked him that, and he said, oh, I've never really uh, tried to go heavier than that on a squat. Because, I mean, it feels good, and I'm getting a good pump in my legs. And so he just stayed with, you know, 135 for three sets of 10 for like a decade. So like, okay. Yeah, that's called adapted. <laughs> he's a lifting slave, this dude, or whatever he's talking about in the gym. Staying with the same weight forever, <laughs> squatting the same weight forever. What is the point of doing it forever and ever? There's no more adaptations there. A waste. But you see the point. He's obviously not going to grow from that. Novices will do that unless you force them to. For people who, who are beyond that and they're willing to push, uh, it, it's different. The heart sets themselves stimulate growth. The progress tells us where we are. You didn't get bigger because you picked up another rep or two. Okay? That's not what made you grow. 
So, or let's say, you know, you see me doing this, this eight. Uh, what makes you grow is an adaptation. A new adaptation makes you grow. I'm upset here with 375. What happens when I, when I take that up 20 pounds? Or what happens when I get back to 405 for eight? Actually, that's the only time you're going to grow if you get an adaptation. If you don't get an adaptation, you're never going to grow. A lot of people get zero adaptations in gyms. <laughs> like I said, sometimes people get them accidentally. They do something and then they go, hey, man, I got these doms, whatever, for so many days. And they get a new adaptation. I will be bigger. Why? Because the growth itself is what allows the progression. Okay. And that's where it gets confused with the, with the novice. Um, because we force that progression that it gives the idea that, that adding that five pounds is what stimulates the growth. No, it, it's only stimulating the growth if the sets are hard. Okay? Does that make sense? It's the other way around. We're adding the weight to make the sets harder. Because otherwise, if they're doing, say, sets of five on the squat, if we don't ever add weight, it's not going to get harder. It's going to get easier, and then they'll stop growing. It is the hard sets, okay? Mm, they'll stop growing. They're not... <laughs> Man, protein synthesis needs to exceed that breakdown to see those contractile proteins on the myofibular. This, this keep, it's going to keep growing. No, the only time something happens in the gym is when you get an adaptation through what muscle damage if muscles aren't being damaged you're not going to get an adaptation now to see that mass on that myofibular protein synthesis needs to exceed that breakdown that's when you see growth it's the hard sets that stimulate growth the progression is is hard sets do not stimulate growth protein synthesis must exceed that breakdown to see that growth a hard set can cause an adaptation through muscle damage. <laughs> they don't cause muscles to grow. What happens after you grow? Okay, the ability to progress. If you were not doing, if you if you keep lifting with the idea that this weight is is somehow building your building a muscle, then you will you will always fail. You're never going to make it, bro. I'm telling you, all you people out there, if you're stupid enough to believe that a lift of heavy weight is, is going to make my muscle grow, then you're fucking, you're done. You're done. As a lifter, you're done, okay? You're never going to progress. You're just going to fail in the gym like everybody else is because they all think that a weight is building them a muscle. You have to be retarded to believe a weight can somehow build you a goddamn muscle. That's just stupid. We're doing sets with three reps in reserve. Yes, adding five pounds is different. Here's the thing. If I'm focused on eccentric, the eccentric movement, then the concentric, then my count is going to be on the eccentric. I'm more focused on the eccentric movement. And so when I'm counting, I'm not counting uh, concentric and then whatever. I'm My first count isn't when I pull the weight up in, in a concentric movement. It's on the downforce, the eccentric. So as I go down, I count one. Then I count two because I want to be focused on the eccentric movement. The problem is people are so focused on the concentric movement. That's why they're failing. When they count, they count one. As soon as they pull the weight, they go one. And then they go two when they pull up. I actually count one on the downforce. I don't count it on the first, on the first rep on the upforce. You understand me? So that's why people fail in the gym because they're not that mind muscle connection. There is mind muscle. You could say that there's a connection between the eccentric and concentric movement. If your whole goal is to get an adaptation, you need to be focused on the eccentric movement because that's what's going to get you an adaptation through muscle damage. That's what's going to damage muscles. If you're not focused on it, then you won't be able to get those things. You're too busy with the concentric, which is not associated with muscle damage. It's not associated with that type of adaptation. It is. It will be associated with some, maybe some motor unit proliferation or something there and some other things, but not a lot, all right? But definitely not with the, with the, with the muscle and the damage and a bunch of other things. Of course, because if you keep adding five pounds, it's no longer going to be three reps in reserve. It's going to turn into one rep in reserve or zero real quick. 
see where we're going. That is what it matters. But if we're taking the sets to limit sets, so you're, you've only got zero or one rep in the tank, or you hit failure, those sets are hard. That stimulates muscle growth, right? The hard sets are what stimulate the most growth. And I'm not saying you have to. The hard, hard sets are going to stimulate muscle growth? How do they stimulate muscle growth? How do they stimulate them to grow, Blaha? Do that to stimulate growth. What I'm saying is that on a set per set basis, that will stimulate the most growth, right? Taking a set to zero reps in reserve will cause more growth than a set with three reps in reserve. You think people eating at McDonald's are gonna stimulate muscle growth? Irrespective of what weight is on the bar. So again, our ability to continue to replicate performance while adding weight is evidence that we got bigger. Because if... Performance, whatever, indicates we got bigger. But you didn't get bigger, because why do you have to say you got bigger? <laughs> you don't have to say you got bigger, because it'll show physically that you got bigger. See what I mean? If your 8 rep max is 300 pounds, until you get bigger... You if you actually are getting bigger, it'll show on your physique that you're getting bigger. You will not be able to do 8 reps with 310. You just won't be able to do it. You'll get 7 reps. The clothes that you're wearing will get tighter, too. Your shirts will get tighter. Your pants will get tighter. You'll notice you're getting bigger. Or 6 or whatever. Okay. But again, what type of growth is that? So here, again... I know what he's saying, okay, look. He keeps saying he's stimulating growth uh, doing these rep schemes, whatever, in the gym. You are stimulating growth. It's sarcoplasmic growth, which is artificial muscle growth. It isn't based on myofibular. Myofibular is based on muscle damage adaptations. It isn't based on I stimulated growth by lifting a heavy weight in the gym through, through carbohydrates, uh, glycogen storage, ATP, uh, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. We understand. If your 8 rep max is 300 pounds, you will not be able to get 9 reps or 10 reps until you get bigger. The progression is what happens. Your ability to progress if you were already doing limit sets is a product of, of hypertrophy largely. Right? It's the biggest factor. So look at it from... Nah, nah, man. In that perspective, yes, progressive overload is extremely important. But it is, it is the difficulty. That's why he doesn't believe in hyperplasia. Hyperplasia happens when muscles are damaged. They repair and remodel what? Bigger and stronger. How do they do that? Well, they're replaced with new muscle fibers. If you're getting a new muscle fiber in that repair and remodeling, that is hyperplasia. You're getting new cells, a cell buildup. The progenitor cell is donating its nuclei. What do they do? Synthesize protein. So you can further that domain. You can further muscle growth. It's reached a ceiling limit during hypertrophic process. Beyond. Get it to support further muscle growth, the satellite cell. So what do you got to do? You got to get an adaptation through what? Muscle damage. It isn't, I'm going to stimulate the muscles in the gym. You can stimulate them and eat carbohydrates and they'll blow up. But that doesn't mean you built any real muscle. That's just something artificial. It don't work. It's something artificial you stimulated. And the fatigue you were creating and the tension created on the muscle fibers through that fatigue that is stimulating the adaptation. All right. He says it's the fatigue and this stuff that is stimulating the adaptation. No, it's not. What's getting you the adaptation is muscle damage. Muscle damage is 100% correlated with what? An adaptation. Yeah, I've put this up on the last video. I actually put a section there, remember? From uh, in Google, whatever, from NCBI. It tells you neurological adaptations, hypertrophy, and so forth and so on. That's what it's associated with, muscle damage. Guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's better. That's the adaptation process. Formative, and I'll talk to you guys next time. No, it threw, it threw us off, bro, because you, you lied. <laughs> Man, this guy doesn't know anything, like I said. Support coach. Anyways, tell me what you think about that. Like, subscribe, support the channel, helps with the algorithm. I'll see you in the next one. Very interesting. Coach Blaha again. Wrong, uh, wrong as usual. <laughs>